I need to step outside and calibrate this. With this particular meter, you have to move the desk. We've got a building downtown. It's having a bunch of air balancing issues. So we're gonna go up, check it out, see what's going on, see what we can do about it. So what I'm gonna do first, I'm just gonna start at the air handler and uh, see what kind of static I'm running at the air handler. And they've so they're supposed to have. Oh dang it! They're supposed to have. Uh, drawings mechanical drawings from when the building was or the floor was redone about a year maybe a year ago they've never gotten this floor to work right ever since it was built back out and that's part of the problem that we need to fix so that's what we'll be looking at today in this wonderful bag here i have so we've got the anemometer and a uh, manometer these will be the two main things we'll be using today. Make sure everything's got batteries. Yep. It's good. I know that does. I just put some in it the other day. So we'll grab a couple of hand items. And take psychrometer. So they, they have a bunch of cold spots and they've got several hot spots. Uh, we've we've tried to make a few adjustments and I'm not gonna go crazy with adjustments strictly because I mean technically they they need to have a balancing for that you know and I'm not here to be their test and balance but we'll take a light we can kind of take some general readings and see if there's anything significantly way out of whack or something dramatic we need to address. So that'll be our main focus. I think that, get the coffee. So it's limited what I can film in the space, but what I'm basically doing so far is I'm walking around and I am just looking for the cold spots, really. I'm also kind of checking the doors to see how much draft they have through them. And I'm really trying to see where our misbalance is. Uh, I'm waiting on the customer to get up here to give me access to the, um, the main spaces I need into, specifically like the air handler room. So I want to check static there at the air handler as well and see just how well are we pushing static at that point and uh, just go from there. I need to step outside and calibrate this. So this is a uh, open air return. So right now I'm standing inside of the return so I can't calibrate to here. But I need to put that cover back on. Anyway, what we'll, what we'll do, like I said, it's a multi-zone. So each one of those goes to a different zone in the space it is not controlling static but that static reading i'll take there at each zone will help me kind of determine if we're not maintaining much static on the supply at all we have too much air open down stream and we, we may need to be we're overfeeding at that point on the flip side of that is if we're high on static inside here or at that supply then you know we, we may be a little restricted we may have enough capacity to open up some uh some some dampers downstream in the space anyway we'll dive into it let's go out to the patio and calibrate this thing before i get too far into anything i get my f big finger in there and zero perfect all right now we can go back in there. We'll stick this in the supply side. Go from there. I'm gonna leave it on so it holds the calibration. So specifically zone eight is our main culprit. They're not getting enough air and it's getting hot. So they got like a 73 degree set point and during the heat of the afternoon, they're getting up in the uh, upper 70s. Oh. Big man, small places. I'm just wondering, are any of these zones even labeled? Yeah, they're labeled south, southwest, 
Yeah, that's not that's not gonna help me much. Anyway, in case you don't know, the way this is functioning is the side closest to me is the uh, the bypass deck. So this does not have hot water, I don't believe, or maybe it does. I think the hot water is downstream. Anyway, so the side closest to me is the bypass. The, the side furthest away from me is the uh, the actual cold deck. So what will happen is there's two sets of dampers in here and a divider wall. So where this, uh, this trunk gets split in half, like in this position right here, the chill, chill, the cold deck damper may be wide open, but at that one being wide open, the bypass deck will be full closed. So they're inverted of each other. So as the space satisfies and it doesn't need as much cooling, we still move the same amount of air, but we'll close down on the chill water damper and open up on the... Uh, uh, on the on the bypass damper to just give them return air at that point so we're just cycling air so we maintain a constant flow on the system the whole time that's how this setup is operating and all of these i'm pretty sure are, are just floating point actuators so they're all in kind of different positions these over here should be this this wing on this side behind me this is the main cold area and so over in this section of the building on this side is where all the hot zones are so that's part of what we're diving into is just why is that happening so I'm taking the first zone here I don't think that reading is accurate so with this particular meter you have to move the decimal point so it's actually 2.4 inches of static I'm pretty confident I'm picking up a lot of turbulence. We're going to pick a different one. Uh, we'll go with this one. Let's try this one instead. And get the probe through there. Okay, maybe... Maybe not. Wow, so what that means is we got a lot more air available than we are actually supplying. So part of what I was nervous about is we wouldn't have that extra that extra static capacity. So what that means to me is downstream, down in the space where they've got their uh, balancing dampers, We've got room on the system to probably adjust those open some and it not dramatically damage the whole thing. Now you have to be careful that's being constant volume. You got to open that stuff up and uh, it does impact the entire system. So you have to take that into account whenever you're doing it. Every adjustment anywhere in the system is going to impact the system as a whole. So that's 1.5. Okay, as long as we're well above one inch, we've got we got room to go. Uh, I, what I didn't want to have is less than less than one inch, which is honestly what I thought I'd see. I genuinely thought I'd walk up here and we weren't even going to have an inch on the space. Yeah, these are floating points. So you see the the middle terminal is your clockwise. Uh, the top one, the white wire, is your counterclockwise, and then the black on the bottom is your common. So these actuators are a, and I don't know how to interpret those numbers. Anyway, these are probably, normally they're like a 90 second actuator is pretty common. So anyway, what the automation does is it knows that at full closed for every second of voltage applied, this would be 24 volts, for every second of voltage applied, it's going to move the damper so many percent to open until it gets a full 90 degree rotation. It's pretty straightforward. So digging through the automation controls here. This zone is the zone I'm working on. This is zone 8. And we have a really high static at this zone of 2.6. So, uh, yeah, I think we got 
those dampers in the space just physically closed off so that's gonna be my next stop I need to go and dig into that and find out what those are set at and see what adjustments we can try to make I went to the space was looking at it and just something didn't seem right you just with the static we had here we were not getting air down in the space at all and I was, I've really been scratching my head on it and so I went down looked at the mechanical drawings and you know I, I saw two fire dampers I went and verified the fire dampers and they're open they're fine and so I just I don't know I just with it with the static I have here and with the airflow I actually have in the space it just did not add up well I, I my gut told me come back just double check here in the mechanical room one more time just just double check here's what I found look at that it is our that's our hot water coil uh, that's our problem right there I got a ton of airflow coming out I got hardly anything going through so all right well that'll take care of that that uh, definitely definitely is our major issue we got to looking at several of the other hot water coils and most of them are look pretty similar to that maybe to some not quite as much that very first zone that I took a reading on it was also above two inches of static uh, that one is almost just as bad as as the the one that I actually got some footage of so we're gonna get a crew together tonight come back and uh, clean that clean that the those hot water coils and get that airflow moving and we'll just go from there I, I think that's gonna take care of majority of their issues and you know they're, they're gonna be really happy with that they're saying they've got several other floors with some similar problems uh, if this works out really well and they, they this corrects majority of their problems they'll probably have us come in and do the same thing thankfully this one has been done before so at the end of last year they changed all their filters to MERV 13 pleated but prior to that they had like a MERV 5 media that they've used for many many years and I, I really think that they were just using too low grade of a filter and that's what it was allowing all that to make it through the system and to get into the the hot water coils so once we get them clean this time those better filters are going to it's going to serve them well going forward in the future remember guys mtt make time for your family make time for your spouse your kids i mean they they really need you i keep saying it you're going to hear me still say it i also want to give another shout out to hvacr videos for his wife's new instagram uh, hvacr wife you know see just see what she's got you know it's, it's just another family support avenue uh, we've got a very demanding industry very demanding careers and you know our, our families ha need to be engaged and involved in part of that process and this is a way that we can all kind of join together and be be united as as more of one you know under this industry in this trade you know and, and giving our families better support appreciate it guys